So if you go and look on YouTube or just online, you'll see lots of things explaining why zero factorial equals one. And the problem with these is there's various arguments, some of which are just simply wrong, and some of which, yeah, maybe are somewhat convincing, but don't really go to the level of mathematically proving that zero factorial equals one. So in this video, we'll talk through all of those different arguments and talk about the issues with them, and then finally talk about how should we think about zero factorial. So the first argument says that there's only one way to arrange zero objects. And to understand this argument, we need to say something quickly about factorials. So what factorial is, like what the number it gives you means, is the number of ways to arrange n objects. So for example, if you took uh, three coins and you tried arranging them in the table, you would see that there are six different ways to arrange them, which is exactly what three factorial equals. So the argument goes, well, if I have zero objects, how many ways can I arrange them? Well, I can arrange them one way. Um, and so therefore, zero factorial equals one. But this is not a convincing argument. I mean, why are we saying that there's only one way to arrange zero objects? Why don't we say that there are no ways to arrange zero objects? Um, well, you may or may not be uh, in agreement with that there's one way to arrange zero objects. It doesn't change the fact that it's not being proved mathematically. It's just saying a logical thing that I think there's one way to arrange them, and another person could say, I think there are zero ways to arrange them. If we're going to define it mathematically, we want it to be shown by the rules of math, which argument one really just doesn't do. So let's look at argument two, which tries to do a better job with that. So argument two says, the important thing about defining zero factorial is that it makes counting arguments, which is also called combinatorics, simpler to do. So let's look at an example of this. So if you have n objects, and you want to figure how many ways you can choose k of them. So for example, if you have a bag with n numbers in it, say five numbers, how many ways can you pull out three of the numbers? The answer to this is n choose k, which is also called the binomial coefficient. And the equation is n factorial over k factorial times n minus k factorial. So let's just do an example here. Let's say we had four objects and we want to choose all four of them out of the bag. Well, if we plug it into the equation, that's four factorial over four factorial times four minus four factorial. So in other words, we get four factorial over four factorial times zero factorial, or you could get one over zero factorial. The person stops and says, okay, if I have four objects in a bag and I'm picking four of them, how many ways can I do that? Well, the argument for this one says, there's one way I can do that. And then at that point, if you solve for zero factorial, you get zero factorial equals one. So again, the problem with this argument is it's also just using logic and not math to say that four objects, choosing four of them can happen one way. So the point again is whether or not you agree that if I have four objects, I can choose four of them one way, you're not proving it mathematically. You're just saying what you think. It's not so much that it's wrong, it's just that it requires more on how someone feels about something more than a mathematical proof. So let's go ahead and jump to the third argument. So the third argument tries to just prove it using math, right? I said the problem with these first two arguments is they're not really using math to prove their point. They use math up to a point and then they stop and just make a logic argument. This one tries to do it entirely using math. So what it says is, hey, what does it mean to take n factorial? n factorial means n times n minus one all the way down until you get to multiplying by just one. And they note, hey, look, if you leave the n out front, everything that's left is n minus one factorial. So I say, okay, let's take one. One factorial uh, is then, using this equation, one times zero factorial. And if you solve for zero factorial, you get zero factorial equals one factorial over one, which is just one. Okay, we've proved zero factorial equals one. But there's a big problem with this. It doesn't actually follow the rule above. The rule above works as long as n is greater than one. And let's see that. So if we take the rule above and we apply it literally, one factorial equals one, but then notice up top here, our product stops at one. There is no more zero factorial left to get. All that that 
formula of top shows is that one factorial equals one. It doesn't tell us anything about zero factorial. So again, this one uses a flawed understanding of what factorial is. In fact, if you just go and look it up, you'll see most places define factorial as the product of all positive integers less than the number. So there is no zero involved in there. Okay, so we've talked about the problem with all these arguments. So what does zero factorial equal then? And the answer is it's convenient to have zero factorial equaling one. It's not that we can prove mathematically that zero factorial equals one. It's that if we set zero factorial equal to one, it makes a lot of other formulas nicer to work with. And we saw that with argument two. Having the uh, zero factorial equals ones means we can say that four choose four equals one. And all the math works out nicely without having this annoying zero factorial on the bottom that doesn't make sense. But being convenient is not the same thing as proving. So you may have also heard the term undefined in math, right? Your teacher may have said that dividing by zero is undefined. What does undefined mean? Undefined means that there's no one answer that works across all of mathematics. If you want an example of this, watch my video on why we can't divide by zero. On the other hand, there are times when we can define things in a way that does make sense across all of mathematics, even if it's weird. An example of this is taking x to the zero and saying this equals one. If you wanna see an example of that, watch my video where I show exactly why uh, proving using math, we can see that x to the zero power equals one. In fact, it's really just the basic rules of algebra. So I hope that makes sense and was interesting. If there's other questions popping up like this you wanna hear more about, please leave a comment below. And if you like this video, give it a like and consider subscribing. All right, thanks everyone. Have a good one.